Hello, internets. How are you? Are you ready for some football? <laughs> I'm not. I am here with eight songwriters, myself included, and we read the book or some parts of the book or all the book or the back of the book or whatever anybody decided to read of this book, Dead Eye Dick by Kurt Vonnegut. And Kurt Vonnegut has this special place in um, not only the Bushwick Book Club's heart and soul, because that was the first book was a Vonnegut book that started this club in Brooklyn a long, long time ago. But Kurt Vonnegut has a special relationship with the Super Bowl because in the year 2000, the Super Bowl in the year 2000, see, I'm so sports savvy. I don't even know how you say that. Super Bowl 2000, I think that's it. Um, I have no idea who won. Tom Brady was probably playing. Um, but Kurt Vonnegut's um, apartment started on fire and he was rushed to the hospital while watching the Super Bowl. He was watching the Super Bowl. So, I mean, this is maybe a kind of a tribute to his love for the Super Bowl or he just happened to watch it that one year. I don't know if he continued to watch it because his house started on fire. He ended up in intensive care from smoke inhalation. His family was all safe. And he ended up being fine, but that's, that's Kurt Vonnegut's relationship to the Super Bowl, you all. I found one, I Googled it, because I was like, I don't know, maybe he has a cool quote. Maybe there's like something he said about the Super Bowl. It wasn't something he said, but it was a great traumatic event or inspiring event in his life. I shall never know. But you will have, learn about this particular book, Dead Eye Dick through the eyes of a songwriter and the first songwriter who is going to present her original song or share her original song. And let me just say, I, I am in no way making any excuses for any of us as performers, but just let you know the process of this is if this is your first time tuning in. We have about 30, 20 to 30 days to read a book, write a song about it. Um, sometimes people are really proactive and they write it, you know, a couple weeks ago and they do all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Sometimes they write it like two hours ago. That's usually me. I happened to write it two days ago, so I'm very impressed and proud of myself this time. But I just want to let you know, this is a sharing of a process. And it's pretty exciting because some of these songs go on to live live. Some of them kind of just end with a show. Some of them change because they have more time to work on them. But you're actually watching the process of a songwriter share something probably for the first time with you online. And the first songwriter to do that is Jesse Kilgus. And hi. Hold on. Hi. How are you? I'm hi. having the hardest Thank time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm using my mouse. Okay. And there you are. Oh, there I am. Um, so I was talking to Stacy earlier and I was just saying uh, Vonnegut has so many great one liners that I really appreciate. And many of them work their way into my song. And here we go. I have not played this song for anybody before. Father was a good time, Charlie. Mother was a colorly shrew. Brother Felix took the fast track to Big Shot Fame. My people opened on this view. We waltzes were all liquors, having shaken hands with death. I was born to be a pharmacist, at least that's what my father said.
It'll get you while you're catching your breath. I think the first paragraph is that watch out for life, right? Yeah. Um, that I pictured like a whole uh, choir of people. Like what are those bands that became popular? I, I can't even, I, whenever I'm hosting, I basically forget every word I've ever learned in the English language, but. Polyphonic spree. Something like that. Yeah, just lots of voices. Um, and lots of like different instruments. That's it. That's what I pictured on your your chorus, and I think your bridge. I was like, oh, this could be massive, and it could definitely be at like Bread and Puppet, or obviously I'm a theater person because I can't think of any cool big music. Foster bands. the people. <laughs> I need to get out more. Doesn't everybody? We need to get out more. All right, I'm gonna play my song, basically because. I'm nervous until I do, and then once I play it, I feel much better about how the evening's gonna go um, for myself. So I don't really have a lot to say about this particular song other than the boy's life that, you know, the main character, it's pretty kind of tragic. And, but he never really talks about it in a tragic way. And he does say when he's not feeling good about himself, he scats. So I kind of just incorporated all that. I'm gonna grab a drink of water off the floor. All right, let me, do I sound like I'm in a bucket? It's my goal in life. Okay. Remember that house The one where that boy lived The one who shot that gun Killing someone What terrible aim he had What was his name? Sounded something like a song And he'd wander all alone Talking to himself He'd sing a fiddly what a boo-boo A rang a dang we A fooly a fooly a Remember that house And that boy we all talked about How could he know Nothing inside was normal An asylum of ego But what could he say He could say, my daddy is crazy, my mama is cold and vast as the sea. Instead, he said, a fiddly what a boo boo, a rang a dang we, a fooly what a fooly what a oo. Oh, a fiddly what a boo boo, a rang a dang we.
Scat singing. Yeah, I'm so glad someone's doing some yeah, scat. I'm glad to hear Someone that. had to do it. That's wonderful. Those, the scat part are the exact words taken from I that. I thought nice. so. Yeah. So. That was great. Very cool. All right. Up next, without much ado, is William Bloat. Good evening, songwriters and friends of songwriters. This is uh, this experience tonight is helping me on my long weaning of pro sports from being important. It's <laughs> not that important, important, is it? Uh, I didn't know that about Vonnegut. That's a great story, by the way. So I love this novel. Uh, you know, he writes so weird. You know how people say it's weirder than stranger than fiction. His fiction is that strange, so it's like it could be real. I don't know how much of it is or isn't, but very imaginative. So this is uh, this is from our lead character here. <clears throat> Dad was a faker of great charm and flair. Mom was a void, I hadn't a prayer. Thank God for the help, they made me a chef. So I've got stuff to cook when I think of her death. Shot in the face. With no warning or clue Dead before she could feel wrong I was a good aim But this was a black rain From some dark cloud way beyond I was numb, I was sick Too young, too thick Yet I became Dead Eye Dick. Pharmacy put me into the zone. Sober I worked for my chance to atone. I watched as my brother ascended the ranks of the empty suit talking heads speaking in blanks he got the money gigs women and fame scared of analysis lives deep in shame fragile inside a failure at love worse off than me a world-class schlub Selling pills gave no thrills I was bored as a brick But I'll always be dead I dick Twelve-year-old sharpshooter Dad taught me well What did he know? He thought Hitler was swell Retreating fantasies just out of reach. No one can tell us what's true. The most beautiful girl you'll ever see will wither and die if she can't be free. There's no going back, no raising the light. I lost my big chance on opening night. Blow up the culture, the values and ways. Live in those narrow rooms all of my days. Kill off the life, but keep all the crap. Waiting around for the final, final zap. 
I tried to be real It just didn't click But I'll always be Dead-eyed dick Yeah. 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 definitely i want his own stage play now oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right That's it. that was awesome and it had so many different movements you know i don't know much about what you do william do you write for theater at all ever it had some i have i have yeah i've done a little bit of that um not much but write a lot of songs and you know this was i mean this was uh three verses Choruses and a bridge, really, the way I look at it. Does it have maybe a lot of chords? <laughs> like, I was going to say, it has a lot of beautiful <laughs> piano chords. Oh, well, that thank I you. Really love. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you all. So next we have uh, Justine Cragen. I kind of always pause, but it's my time to be the, the tech person. Justine Cragen. Uh, Justine Craigan is next. <laughs> Hello. Um, I wrote my song. I wrote, I read the whole book recently, very recently, and wrote the song. I started it on Friday, so it's really new, and I hope I remember it. And um, I was inspired to write about Otto Waltz, the dad. So here it goes.
I can't believe you wrote that yesterday. Did oh my god, I'm so it's like so maddening. I'm like, oh my god, how can I remember all this stuff? <laughs> there was a lot in that song. I wrote, I, know, I wrote half the lyrics today, so I was like, ah. Gosh. Uh, the chord changes were beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the really I don't nice. know what the chords going into the like second part of the song were so beautiful. Thank you. Um, it's funny how people pick up on different characters to write about. I was thinking while you were playing your song, I was like, oh, this, this book. There's a lot of bad parenting in this book. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was like bad, but he was like you know I kind of saw him as a kind of pure soul like he was just yeah. trying to have fun you know and he just like got involved he like met the wrong people and really wrong and, yeah and like it's just like everything just bad luck for this guy you know like I don't know yeah. I kind of <laughs> well thank you so much um so I'm Justine started the book club with me about in 2014 you just did it in houses and in my yard, my yard of my apartment building, which is only five apartments here and there's this big yard. So we were just, it was very intimate. And this next performer I had known since college and she started with us live as well. She started in my front yard and then we moved into actual spaces and she played a couple of those shows, but she has never done an online streaming show of just herself at least. So this is, not only has the like sensitivity of like, oh, I wrote this song at least probably within this week, yesterday or whenever, um, but this is her first time streaming online. So I want to introduce her and congratulate her because this is this is a unique <laughs> experience. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the next performer is Jessica Littlefield. Oh, it's Daisy. I adore you. Um... Yeah, you know, I've followed Justine many times in the past, and she is such a killer guitarist. Um, do not expect anything like that. But um, uh, Justine, you're so inspiring to hear. All of you guys are really, um, book club has been amazing. And uh, it's gotten me a little bit farther in this little instrument here, so that's good. Uh, usually I write with a band member, so. Um, I liked Dead Eye Dick. I didn't love it. And it took me until the very last sentence of the book to get a point of view to write from. It's um, about how your whole life is epilogue once you've made a big mistake. And um, how you kind of take people with you when you make a big mistake. So kind of grabbed onto that here. Here we go. Maybe you can help me name it. Everybody hear me okay? Okay, okay. There was no moon that night, no stars in the sky. You got the keys to the castle and a look out on high. I watched the devil come and take you away. It's different now. Nothing more to say. I dream of holding your hand, then letting go. Is it time to go west or time to go home? I never rest you to take you with me, boy. I never wanted to. Be your Helen of Troy. We're buzzing now. The act has ended. Never return. The curtains descended. A wisp of nothing. Nothing. A ghost on your way to hell. You couldn't respect the way it's done. 
You made us both guilty, baby. Now we're on the run. Maybe I'll go west. Maybe, maybe, baby, I'll go west. But we're buzzing now. The act has ended. Never return, the curtains descended. A whisper, nothing, nothing. Now we're ghosts on our way to hell. Yeah. And you did an awesome job. Jessica. Thank you, my love. Yes, that was beautiful. That I mean, that I, I actually found the page in the book, and I will un, unspotlight you before I read it, so you don't just sit there and stare at me reading it. But I just wanted to read that paragraph because you had such a poignant way of like putting that that part of it together about how it really was they each had these, were living these epilogue. It's, it seems maybe all the characters by right. the middle of the book. Once so, they had to deal with a problem. Yeah. yeah. So I was just going to read that one paragraph. And right. then when I am done reading, we have Tim Bartlett, who um, always does something very interesting. There's a lot of keyboard players today. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I, I love guitars as well. <laughs> But we usually have lots of guitars and not as many keyboards, so I'm just excited that, you know, my, my keyboard people are here. So I'm just going to read this one little part because this is what she was talking about, and it's, it, it is a very poignant part of the book. Um, we all see our lives as stories, it seems to me, and I am convinced that psychologists and sociologists and historians and so on would find it useful to acknowledge that. If a person survives an ordinary span of 60 years or more, there is every chance that his or her life as a shapely story has ended. And all that remains to be experienced is epilogue. Life is not over, but the story is. Just such a, <laughs> such a high. <laughs> like, it really makes me feel great. But anyways, I, I love his writing and I felt like I wanted to read something and that seems like a good thing to read after your song. I'm, so. glad, you, I'm glad you chose that part. Yeah. Tim, you are on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Last time uh, I had unmuting issues. Um, so I, I actually uh, mainly go instrumental um, with a lot of knobs and whatnot. Um, and this uh, in this book, I, I thought I'd write about um, the, uh, this whole family of frauds, as he says, they're all frauds. You know, everyone just sort of thinks that they're something, but they're not really that thing. And um, their, their last name is Waltz. So I thought I'd write um, in honor of Otto Waltz, an automated waltz. So here's a, an auto waltz, automatic waltz with some buttons.
Yay. Love that. Yo, 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 yo. It totally fits. so cool. Look like a jazz. Like a jazz. Like a jazz club. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a, so, what, okay, so I always call what you do bleeps and bloops. Which that didn't seem like a bleeps and bloops. That one I don't really, I can't really say bleeps and bloops. But then I learned there actually is a style called bleeps and bloops. Yeah, it's a it's a subgenre of electronic music. Bleeps I am learning so much from Tim. So the last time he played, he did granular synthesis, and because I called it bleeps and bloops, and he was like, "Well, I mean, that is actually." So I looked it up. And that was fascinating, taking like a piece of sound and then you take the piece of sound and then you do stuff with that piece of sound and it's different than using waves of sound. It was a rabbit hole. And so <laughs> what would you call this? Like what you were doing electronically? Obviously the piano is adding the bit the Right, well, this is much more, um, it'd be more straightforward with a step sequencer. Okay. Triggering um, various sounds. The sounds are generated here and then there's another one here and um, this thing here is telling which one when to trigger. So this is this was playing the um, the bass the the waltz line, and then this was triggering at certain points. This was triggering at different points, and at one point I switched it. So then they sort of get a little syncopated, and then that goes into this part, which is the time shifting part where things sort of get delayed and echoed and repeat and reversed and all sorts of weird stuff. And then there's also feedback, and basically it's just starting out with some. Um, uh, step sequence and then just <laughs> weird stuff happen. That's yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Yep. Um, I kind of also was thinking this would be cool if they remade the labyrinth <laughs> and the waltz scene where they're in like all the Baroque costumes and it's like it could just be like a more modular synthesized thing. All right. I uh, thank you so much you. Uh, for always doing something very interesting. Um, <laughs> Tim Bartlett. Next, we have uh, Nicole Tortolo, and you are up, Nicole. No, you're not. That's the wrong person. You're on, <laughs> Kyle. You're on. Don't. You're not on anymore. Let's see. Let me find Nicole. How did that happen? There. Now you're on. Hello. <laughs> um. So I was inspired by a line at the end of the book um, and it goes, you want to know something? We are still in the dark ages, the dark ages. They haven't ended yet. Um, and it just made me think about how uh, we are someone else's past. We are history for someone in the future. <laughs> so I went with that. All right. Long after all of this has ceased to be, when everyone is gone, including you and me, one day they'll try to understand why all we talked about was an orange man. Dark ages, we are living in dark ages. We are pink highlighted pages in somebody's freshman history book. Dark ages, when they put the kids in cages. If they try to get away from something that was worse. children say what will the children say what will the children say when they learn it on pandemic day how a bill becomes a law branches of government blah 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 these dark ages dark ages 
Are we in the final stages where the man named Q still rages? These dark ages getting more and more outrageous, and the virus just gets more and more contagious. And the people went to parties, and the people went to parties in the dark ages. We're the dark ages. This is how the world ends. This is how the world ends. Not with a bang, but a penny whistle. Not with a bang, but a penny whistle. Not with a bang, but a penny whistle. The orange man. That is a catchy <laughs> tune. <laughs> that's that's something you find yourself singing, and you're like, this is actually really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean it's great. It's exactly that's also a great line from the book. The great moment when you're like, ah. Oh. It's funny though, the party line makes so much sense to us right now as being part of the dark ages when you hear people like oh, they're having a big party. <laughs> but I, I mean, I wonder how people, like when you listen to this song 10 years from now and you're like looking back at it, like your song says, I wonder if it'll be like, what does that line mean? Why, oh, it's like Ring Around the Rosies, right? <laughs> like, oh, it's a dark song about the plague. And <laughs> people didn't go to parties. They shouldn't go to parties. Thank you. My neighbor's your... having a party right now. Just <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, I heard the parties going on while I was on my hike. I was like, there's a lot of noise coming from oh, down yeah. there. I felt like I, they were, Whoville was very loud. Um, thank you, Nicole. And I'm going to take you off spotlight. And next, let's see. I don't, I don't, oh, I know who it is. It's always exciting to see what's going to happen with Rupert Angel Eyes. So, Rupert Angel Eyes, we are, are oh, on. on. That's me. I'm online.com. <laughs> I'm online.com. Thank you, YouTube. I just want to shout it out. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I love this book very much. Uh, I read it when I was like 18 years old, and oftentimes I read things when I'm 18 years old and I think it's a great novel and then turns up I, turns out I grow up and uh it's not a very good book or anything but uh gosh darn I love this book so much and um I tried to write um a song for the book club four different times they all failed and finally I settled on um this uh quote unquote uh playlist that happens between Rudy Waltz and Celia um, in the pharmacy where um, Rudy Waltz like shuts down because he can't communicate with his feelings. So he has to deal with them by making a playlet. Uh, and that inspired me. And I also thought too, like how Celia um, is also like this um, ostracized character who can't deal with themselves anymore. And Rudy Waltz is also an ostracized character and somehow they um, love each other and are connected. Um, yeah, but they, they're they like the same person, but they also don't feel attachment to each other at all. Um, I don't know, I'm rambling, but uh, for reference, uh, trying to write this song, I uh, was referencing um, um the playlet that uh rudy waltz wrote uh and it goes a little something like this if i can make it happen 
Let's see. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm trying a, a new system. Okay, I think this works. I think of empty shotgun shells Like you I'm a shadow I resign to my quiet self My brother cries sloppy tears for you He crashed his car into something blue You're the strangest thing a bombshell who lit her own fuse Crazy baby Roam the whole night through There's no place to feel safe Except Thank you, thank you. I was hoping someone would write a song about Celia. And that line, I know. the face she finally, the face she wanted. Oh. That was a great line. Yeah. I know. She finally like felt freedom because she was finally ugly. And that's what she wanted the whole time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Such a sad story. They're all really sad. sad. I don't know. I thought it was, I thought the book was funny as hell the entire time. Like, I didn't think it was sad. You're like laughing and, and then it's all terrible stuff happening, really. But that's what I love about him. And he says all these poignant lines. He watches the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like I, I played this song for somebody a day ago. I was like, is this a good song? And they're like, Kyle, is there something wrong with you? <laughs> a, a very sad song. And I was like, this is the funniest song ever. I think it's hilarious. Well, and his uh, brother crashes his car into something blue. I mean, OK. This is a I nice think it's day. funny the whole time. Yeah. I thought it was funny Thank you too. So much, Kyle. Thank you, Rupert Angel Eyes, as you go by um, your performance. Here's my daughter. So I guess it's time for the show to almost end. But so I think these songs are so much better when you read the book. Hold on, there. Um, there, there. So if you are able to read the book, and I will tell you what our next book is. It is the life of the mind. Let's get the picture up there by Christina, but Christine Smallwood, and it is being released March 2nd. So we are gonna write songs about this book that is like a new release. Um, I just saw Justine's little boy in the camera and I thought it was my kid, but she's way down here. Um, so get this book, it's out March 2nd, get it, read it, because these songs are so much more interesting. I mean, they're interesting on their own. I mean, some of them totally exist on their own that you don't even need to know they came from a book. But like that uh, Rupert song, 
that that had so many little gems and little Easter eggs in there. If you'd read the book, that were awesome. Um, so before I go, I have one final thing. Our next show is March 21st. Uh, it's The Life of the Mind. Most of these songwriters are going to be participating in that. A couple that aren't here are also participating. We will hopefully, the plan is to have the author on um, and Nicole will interview her. So, um, so please join us again, March 21st. I'll be posting about it. Also, we have a Venmo, it's just my name because right now I just pay for everything. But everything that gets the streaming and everything is this Venmo account. When we're live, we ask for donations and we give them to the sound man. There's my child's finger <laughs> pointing to the, the thing. So you don't have to give us anything and you can watch and we're more than glad to have you. But if you feel like there's money burning through your pocket and you want to digitally send it somewhere, Stacy Rock Music, Venmo. Um, other than that, I'm going to bring all the songwriters back on, I think. This is my intention. Um, and I'm going to say, yay, everybody. And, yay. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> we will see you 